Hello, my name is Richard Webster. Happily for me, Llewellyn's have published eight of my books on angels, including my new book, Archangels, How to Work and Invoke with Angelic Messengers. Today, I'd like to talk about how to work with archangels. I'd better start by telling you something about angels and specifically archangels. Angels are spiritual beings who act as divine messengers and are go-betweens between humanity and the divine. The word angel comes from the Greek word angelos, which means messenger. They're actually celestial beings of pure light who operate on a different vibrationary frequency from us. This makes them invisible for us, except on occasions when they lower their vibrations to a human level so they can be seen. When they do this, they can appear in any shape or form they wish. Consequently, you might see an angel as a person, a small cherub with wings, a butterfly or other winged figure, a rainbow, a bright light, or anything else. Angels work to protect and guide humanity. Consequently, you can contact them whenever you need help of any sort. The prefix arch in the word archangels comes from the Greek word for chief. Consequently, archangels are chief messengers. In the Bible, Archangel Gabriel told Mary that she was going to give birth to Jesus. This was obviously an important message that had to be delivered by a very important angel, and Gabriel was the obvious choice. No one knows how many archangels there are, and in my book I discuss a number of possibilities. Traditionally, there are seven archangels, and most authorities consider them to be Raphael, Michael, Gabriel, Uriel, Raguel, Sariel, and Remiel. Four of these are considered more important than the others and are called the four angels of the presence. They are Raphael, Michael, Gabriel, and Uriel. These are the archangels we'll be working with today. Raphael is the archangel of healing and gained this reputation because he healed Tobit's blindness in the book of Tobit. You can call on Raphael if you need healing, abundance, knowledge, honesty, and energy. Raphael also relates to the east, spring, the color blue, and the element of air. This means he also relates to the astrological air signs of Gemini, Libra, and Aquarius. Michael is the archangel of love, courage, strength, and protection, and is the most important angel in Christianity, Judaism, and Islam. He constantly fights the forces of evil to create a world of peace and harmony. Michael relates to the south, summer, the color red, and the element of fire. This means that he looks after the astrological fire signs of Aries, Leo, and Sagittarius. Gabriel is the Archangel of the Annunciation and is God's main messenger. You can call on Gabriel if you need to overcome doubts and fears and want harmony, wisdom, and help in achieving your hopes and aspirations. Gabriel relates to the West, autumn or fall, the color emerald, and the element of water. This means he looks after the water signs of Cancer, Scorpio, and Pisces. Uriel is the angel of peace, clarity of thought, insight, prophecy, wisdom, natural phenomena, and the earth. He relates to the north, winter, the color green, and the element of earth. This means that he looks after the earth signs of Taurus, Virgo, and Capricorn. If you need an archangel urgently, all you have to do is call out to the angel you want. Michael is often invoked this way when people are in desperate need of help. He came to my aid instantly on all three occasions I've called out to him. If the situation isn't desperate or life-threatening, I prefer to create a circle of protection using Raphael, Michael, Gabriel, and Uriel. Obviously, you need an intention or purpose to create the circle. You might like to create a circle of protection to surround you while you're talking with your guardian angel. You don't need to do this, of course, as your guardian angel is always with you and you can talk to each other at any time at all. However, you might feel you gain a closer relationship with your guardian angel while talking inside your circle. That would certainly be a valid, valid intention. It's also perfectly valid to create a circle 
and then meditate inside it. You may want to ask the four archangels of the presence questions about anything you're uncertain about or unsure about doing. You can perform a variety of rituals inside the circle. One I particularly enjoy doing is a gratitude ritual, and I'll talk more about that shortly. The first step is to create a circle of sacred space to work in. You can create a circle anywhere where there's enough room. It should be at least seven feet in diameter. You can mark out the circumference of the circle using a length of rope, or maybe by placing small objects such as crystals, stones, ornaments or candles to indicate the circumference. With practice, you won't necessarily need to mark the circle as you'll be able to visualize it. Even though I often do that, I rather enjoy using crystals to indicate the circumference of my circle. During the summer months, I prefer to create a circle outdoors, but unless it's warm, I work indoors during the winter months. I have a circular rug that's about seven feet in diameter, which I use to mark out my circle when working indoors at home. Put a bit of thought into where you want your circle to be, especially at home. This is because if you use the same place regularly, it will build up a sacred or spiritual feeling that will sometimes be sensed by other people who have no idea that you're using the space to communicate with angels. I like to use the same place whenever possible because I feel safe, protected, spiritual, and in contact with the angelic realms as soon as I even think about constructing a circle. This applies both when I work indoors and outdoors. I try to purify the environment as much as possible. I open windows to allow plenty of fresh air to circulate in the room. I also play quiet, gentle music or use a singing bowl to help create the right atmosphere. If I want to thoroughly cleanse the room, I'll use a smudge stick. Another thing I sometimes need to remind myself of is to eliminate clutter. The room you use might be small, but it needs to feel spacious. Of course, it isn't always possible to use the same space every time. I travel a great deal and create circles of protection everywhere I go. When I work outdoors, I create a circle of protection close to my oracle tree, which is in a public park. 25 years ago, when I found my oracle tree, the park was extremely quiet and I usually had it all to myself. That seldom happens nowadays, and especially during weekends, it can get busy. Consequently, the best time for me to work there is at dusk when most people have returned home. I should explain that an oracle tree is a personal sacred tree that you find by hugging trees that appeal to you. This is an ancient Celtic concept. When you find a tree that responds well to you, it can become your oracle tree. I'm not sure if you actually find your oracle tree or if it finds you. As you get to spend time by your oracle tree, meditating or simply relaxing, it may ask you to become its guardian. This means you have a responsibility to look after the area surrounding the tree as well as everything inside that area. This area is a perfect place for a circle of protection. Once you've created the circle, place a comfortable chair in the middle of the circle facing east. Nowadays it's easy to find east as all cell phones contain a compass. Walk around the circle three or four times, but don't enter it immediately. If you're doing it this at home, have a shower or bath to symbolically purify yourself first. Put on loose-fitting, clean clothes and then walk into the center of your circle. Face east, close your eyes and visualize a stream of white light coming down from the heavens and filling your circle and you with divine love and protection. Wait until you sense that your circle is completely filled with white light and say thank you out loud. Open your eyes and visualize the great Archangel Raphael standing in front of you. You might see him the way he usually appears in paintings. A tall, bearded, robed figure holding a staff and a fish. It's more likely that you'll see him as a ball of energy or a rainbow of color. Don't worry about how you see or sense Raphael, just as long as you know he's standing right in front of you. When you first start working with this ritual, you might have to imagine he's there. Once you sense that Raphael has joined you, extend your right hand 
with the first two fingers extended, as if you're pointing directly at Raphael. Start at the bottom left-hand side and create an imaginary pentagram, a five-sided star, in the air in front of you. After you've done this, bring your hand back a few inches and then making a stabbing motion through the center of your pentagram. Keep your right hand extended as you turn 90 degrees to face south. Visualize the great Archangel Michael standing directly in front of you. You may see him as a bearded figure holding a sword in one hand and a set of scales in the other. He might be wearing armor with one foot resting on a defeated dragon. He might appear as swirls of color. Again, it doesn't matter how you visualize him, just as long as you know he's standing right in front of you. Make the sign of the pentagram again and finish with a stabbing motion into the center of the pentagram. Turn another 90 degrees to face west. This time, visualize Archangel Gabriel. I see Gabriel wearing pale green or blue robes and carrying a tulip in one hand and a trumpet in the other. This is how he is usually depicted by artists. The tulip symbolizes the purity of Mary, the mother of Jesus, and the trumpet is carried to wake the dead on Judgment Day. Of course, you can visualize Gabriel in any form that seems right to you. Once you've done that, draw another pentagram and make another and make a stepping motion through it. Finally, turn another 90 degrees and visualize Archangel Uriel in the north. I picture Uriel as a dark-haired, bearded man dressed in green or brown robes. He carries a scroll in one hand. As the name Uriel means flame of God, artists usually depict him with a burning flame on the palm of one hand, and that is how I see him too. Once you've visualized Uriel, create a final pentagram, stab it, and turn to face east again, and then lower your right hand. This means you are now totally encircled by the four great archangels and are completely protected. You can do anything you wish inside your circle. You should talk to the archangels and thank them for their help and protection. You might call on any angel you wish to communicate with and enjoy conversing with him or her. You might pray or simply meditate inside your special sacred space. When you feel ready to close your circle, Turn to the east and thank Raphael for his help and protection. Turn to the south and thank Michael, followed by Gabriel and Uriel. When you feel ready, step outside the circle. The ritual is over, but you should ground yourself by having something to eat and drink before carrying on with your day. I usually have a handful of nuts and raisins and a glass of water. You'll find this ritual will give you unlimited energy as well as a sense of peace and protection. So, that's the basic ritual. Let's assume you have a problem that you need help with. Life isn't easy, and we all need help from time to time. You'll find this ritual useful whenever you find yourself needing assistance from the angelic realms. Your angels are always willing to help you, but you should make every effort to help yourself first. Frequently, you'll find you can resolve a problem without asking for additional help. You should ask angels for help only if you can't resolve the problem on your own. Start by creating a circle of protection. Sit down in the center of the circle, close your eyes and take several slow, deep breaths. Allow all the muscles in your body to relax. When you feel completely relaxed, Think about your problem or concern. Silently or out loud, tell the archangel you want to speak to about your problem and what you have done to try to resolve it. Once you've done that, ask for help. Sit quietly for at least 60 seconds and see what comes into your mind. You may feel something such as a sense of peace or comfort. You may hear a voice if the archangel decides to have a conversation with you. This voice may seem to come from inside your, hell, inside your head, or it could just as easily be heard as a small voice coming through your ears. Listen carefully and wait until the archangel is finished before asking any questions. 
Once you've received all the comfort and information that you need, thank the Archangel, say goodbye, and focus on your breathing again for a minute or two. When you, say, when you feel ready, say thank you one last time, slowly count from one to five, and open your eyes. You can carry on with your day, feeling confident that your problem will be resolved. Earlier, I mentioned a gratitude ritual that I perform inside the circle of protection. I consider gratitude to be a spiritual practice and certainly being grateful for what you do have rather than focusing on what you don't have enables you to focus on the positive things in your life. Performing a gratitude ritual is easy to do when everything in your life is going well. However, it's probably more important to do it when things are not going your way as it forces you to think of what you are grateful for. As so many people constantly think about everything that's not right about their lives, I often suggest that they keep a gratitude journal and to write down three or maybe five things that they're grateful for every day. You need to write down a different selection of items every day. I've been asked what you should do when you've listed everything you're grateful for. That's impossible. You can express gratitude for the fact that you're alive, of course. You can be grateful for your mind, your heart, your eyes and your health. But what about your toes, your fingers, your arms, legs, kidneys, liver, spleen, bones and every other part of your body? And what about your different senses? What about your emotions and feelings? Once you've covered all the obvious things about yourself, you can start on less important things, such as your gratitude for a long hot bath, or even the warm slice of toast you enjoy at breakfast. There's at least a year's worth of things to be grateful for there, before even starting on family, friends, home, work, possessions, vacations, not to mention your gratitude to the divine and the angels for the universe and the wonderful planet we live on. The list of possibilities is endless. Start the gratitude ritual by creating a circle of protection. Once you've done that, sit down in the center of the circle, close your eyes and take several slow, deep breaths. When you feel comfortably relaxed, think of something good that has happened to you recently. It doesn't matter how small or large it may be. It might be someone holding a door open for you or letting you change lanes in heavy traffic. It could be a chance meeting with a good friend. It might be an overseas vacation or buying a new car. Relive the experience in your mind and then express your gratitude to the architect of the universe for making it happen. I'm calling the divine the architect of the universe here. You might prefer to use God, the divine, infinite spirit or some other name. Smile and then think of a person or a pet that you love. Allow yourself to relive the feelings you have whenever you're with the special person or animal. Think of something that both of you have done together and again express your gratitude to the architect of the universe for bringing you together. The next stage is to think of a time when you are honored or appreciated by others. This might be a recent promotion at work or it might be as long ago as your fifth birthday party. It doesn't matter how small or, or large the occasion was, just as long as you can relive the happy occasion in your mind. Again, express gratitude to the architect of the universe for enabling it to happen. Think of the four archangels who are surrounding you with love and protection and thank them and the guardian of the universe for giving you opportunities to develop and grow spiritually. Sit quietly for a minute or two, thinking of happy memories from the past and expressing your gratitude for all of them. Think of the important people in your life and ask the great archangels to send love and blessings to them. Give thanks to the architect of the universe for all the blessings in your life and close the ritual by thanking the four archangels for their help and protection. Now, of course, you can modify this ritual in any way you wish. For instance, I often recite the prayer of St. Francis after I've created the circle, 
as the words give me a strong sense of peace and add a strong spiritual element to the ritual. I'd be remiss if I didn't mention my favourite way of communicating with angels, which involves going for a walk with an angel. Usually my daily walk gives me an opportunity to talk with my guardian angel, but sometimes I'll ask other angels to join me if the matter is important. Now, if the matter is important, I might ask to speak with a particular archangel. The actual process couldn't be simpler. Ahead of time, I decide which angel I'd like to speak to. I set out on my walk, and after about five minutes, I'll invite the specific angel to walk with me. After a minute or two, I become aware that an angel is walking with me. I don't see or hear this angel, but experience a strong sense of his presence. Once I realize that the angel has joined me, I start talking with him. I must admit that I've learned the hard way to communicate silently rather than out loud. I live, I live near the edge of a city and usually walk in the countryside. I seldom see anyone except when I'm talking to the angels out loud. The angels' answers appear as thoughts in my mind. Once we've discussed everything I need, I thank the angel and complete the walk on my own. Once you become used to walking with an angel, you'll find that you can do it anywhere, even in a busy shopping mall. I've always loved working with the pendulum. And over the years, I've written two books on the subject. A pendulum is a small weight attached to a thread or chain. My mother always used oops, <laughs> her wedding ring as the weight and attached to it short to a short length of cotton. Specially made pendulums can be bought from any new age store, but effective pendulums can also be made from any small objects that can be suspended from string or thread or chain. The ideal weight is about three ounces. You'll have to experiment to determine the best length of thread for you. Somewhere between three and six inches should work well. If you're right-handed, hold the thread between the thumb and first finger of your right hand. Rest your elbow on the surface of a table or your altar if you're using one and suspend the weight an inch or so above the surface. If you're left hand, you'll probably find it easier to use a pendulum with your left hand. However, experiment as many people prefer to use a pendulum with their less dominant hand. Stop the movement of the pendulum with your free hand. When it stopped moving, ask your pendulum which movement indicates yes. You can ask this question mentally or out loud. It might take a minute or two for the pendulum to respond the first time you try this. Once you become used to it, it will move instantly you'll find the pendulum moving in one of four directions to indicate yes. It might swing away from you and back towards you. Alternatively, it might swing from side to side or move in a circular manner, either clockwise or counterclockwise. Once the pendulum has given you a positive response, you can ask it for the three movements that indicate no, I don't know, and I don't want to answer. Test the movements with questions that you already know the answers to. You might, for instance, ask, am I male? If you are, your pendulum should make a yes response. If you're female, it should say no. Like anything else, it takes practice to become skilled with the pendulum. However, it's an extremely useful talent that you'll be able to use in many ways. Once you become familiar with the pendulum, you can use it in a ritual to contact any of the archangels, or in fact, any angel at all. Sit in the middle of your circle of protection and consciously relax as much as possible. After a minute or two, pick up your pendulum and deliberately swing it in a clockwise direction for 60 seconds. Stop the movement of your pendulum and then say out loud that you wish to speak with a particular angel. Let's assume for the purpose of explanation that it's Archangel Michael. Think of your need to communicate with him and then ask the pendulum if Michael is with you. Hopefully the pendulum will give you a positive response and you can start asking my Michael to help you. If the pendulum gives no response, it means that Michael is on his way. 
wait a further 60 seconds and then ask again. Once Mikhail gives a positive response, you can continue in one of two ways. You can continue asking Mikhail questions that will be answered through the pendulum, or you can put the pendulum aside and hear Mikhail's response in your mind. It's called clear audience. Clear audience is the ability to hear things clairvoyantly. Some people are able to do this naturally, but anyone can learn it to do it with practice. If you have a large seashell, for instance, you can experiment with this by holding it up to your ear and listening to the sounds of the ocean. Naturally, this is not what you actually hear, but the sound acts as an audible screen that works with your psychic hearing in the same way a crystal ball works with the psychic sight. With clear audience, thoughts appear in your mind. At first, you may doubt the messages you'll receive. After all, our minds are busy giving us messages all day long. How can we determine which ones are psychic and which ones are our own thoughts? Well, one method of developing this talent is to imagine you having a conversation with someone you greatly admire. Ask this person a question and then think about the answer. Repeat this several times. When you feel ready, ask another question, but make no attempt to provide an answer. Wait and see what comes to your mind. You'll find your skill and proficiency at clear audience will develop best when you cease analysing it and simply allow it to happen. Sit down in a comfortable chair with pen and paper. You may find it helpful to wear some lapis lazuli as this crystal enhances clear audience abilities. Close your eyes and take several slow deep breaths to relax your mind and body. Visualize yourself surrounded by pure white light and then ask a specific archangel to join you. You can ask out loud or mentally. I've done this exercise in a room with other people present and they had no idea what I was doing. So obviously, in this instance, I was saying nothing out loud. Once you sense the archangel is with you, ask any questions you wish. The answers will appear in your mind. Don't evaluate or think about the responses in any way. It's a good idea to write them down later so you can think about them. When you've finished asking questions, thank the Archangel for his help and support. Spend several seconds focusing on your breathing, become aware of your surroundings, and then open your eyes. Wait a minute or two before reading the answers you wrote down. I think we've got time for one more. I call this one writing a letter ritual. Let's assume you want to contact Archangel Mikhail. Start by writing a letter to Mikhail. Write it as if you're writing to a close friend. In effect, this is what Mikhail is. After all, Mikhail loves you and is prepared to help you in any way possible. Start by telling Mikhail what is going on in your life. Provide as much background as you think necessary. This is mainly to, to clarify everything in your own mind, and it's an important part of the, of the ritual. Tell Mikhail about the important people in your life, and then move on to your hopes and dreams. When you feel ready, make your request. Sign the letter with love, and then place it in an envelope. Seal it and address it to Archangel Mikhail. If possible, wait overnight before continuing with the ritual. You can carry on immediately if the matter is urgent, but usually it's better to allow some hours to pass between writing the letter and sending it to Mikhail. Make sure that you will not be interrupted. Sit down comfortably in front of your altar, light a candle if you wish, close your eyes and surround yourself with white light. When you feel ready, ask Mikhail to join you. Once you sense his presence, open the envelope and read the letter out loud. When you've finished, fold the letter again and return it to the envelope. Sit quietly and wait for Mikhail to respond. The reply may come in a variety of ways. Usually Mikhail will send you a message that you will receive clear audiently. Alternatively, you may picture a letter arriving in your mind. In your mind's eye, see yourself receiving it, opening it and reading it. 
Another possibility is that you experience a sense of knowing that everything will be all right. Although you do not receive a specific answer in this instance, you will experience a certainty in every part of your being that Mikhail will be working on your behalf to resolve the situation. Open your eyes, confident that the matter is being attended to. You may sense nothing immediately. If this occurs, sit comfortably for a few minutes and then gradually become aware of your surroundings and open your eyes. Carry on with your day, confident that Mikhail will provide you with an answer when he is ready. On these occasions, you may find that the situation resolves itself without any need for Mikhail to reply. He will have attended to the situation and created a satisfactory outcome for everyone concerned. Well, thank you all very much indeed for watching and listening to this. I hope you've enjoyed it and I hope it's given you some good ideas that you'll be able to put into practice and experiment with yourself. And my grateful thanks for Llewellyn's for making it possible for me to be here with you today. Thanks to you all. Bye.